Yea, verily, I say unto thee, my children. <coughs> yeah, I'm gonna say unto um, I found some interesting sites today that I just kind of wanted to like mention real quick. Um, I'm not for making fun of people's religions. You know what? Believe in what you want to believe in, and that's cool. If it keeps you, gets you through the day, go for it. However, and this is not intended for anybody to take personally, I just found this site hilarious. Annoyingjesus.net. <clears throat> it's got several pictures. I'll quote a few of them. Actually, it might even be funnier for me to describe them. This is Jesus being by your side day to day, every day. And some of the situations you might find them in. Well, they must have produced these as, as, I don't know, prints or graphics or something. They're black and white pencil sketches. Just go there. <laughs> I'm not going to describe it. Anyway, I'm going to describe one of them just because I'm this far into it. I'm committed now. Uh, okay. This is a picture of a farmer. This is all pencil drawing. Holding a pitchfork with a bunch of hay. Feeding it to one, two, three, four cows. Uh, milk cows, looks like. Um, in a in a fenced-in area. Looks like, looks pretty nice. Comfortable. Uh, <clears throat> now behind this guy, over his shoulder, kind of watching what he's doing, you know, throughout his day, is a depiction of Jesus. Jesus Christ, that is, not the other Jesus. Um, so, and what he's saying to the farmer in this picture, now mind you, I seriously, I'm not making fun of anybody, uh, I just, I found this funny, and it could have been any god, or any deity, or any demigod, or any avatar, or whatever. <laughs> Got a little carried away. Um, <clears throat> Jesus says, when they move in to eat the hay, stab one in the eye. And the farmer, in turn, replies, WTF, Jesus, with a question mark. That's funny. <laughs> I think it's funny. And uh, they, they just go on and on. Here's a, here's a pencil drawing of a man laying carpet. Carpet's the only thing you'll ever lay, Carl. F off, Jesus. And they just go on and on. I mean, there's some that like I couldn't even say on here. Oh, this one. I kind of want this as a t-shirt. I can't say it, though. If you go to the site now, this is as of tonight at 9.15. It would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, number 8. <laughs> it's a woman putting cakes into an oven, and Jesus is looking over her shoulder, and she, he says something incredibly terrible, terrible, awful, awful. Just not, but it, the site's funny. Just go check it out. Annoyingjesus.net. The other thing I found today... Is it weird when I do this? Because I'm trying to look at, at the interweb. <clears throat> and read you things that you might funny. Yeah, I mean, I know you could just <laughs> log in to Facebook and scroll down. And, you know, a lot of our friends are probably similar. Oh, look at this. Toys from the 80s. He-Man. And Cringor. Not Cringor. Battle Cat. That was Cringor when he was the little sissy. all I got. <clears throat> all right, here's another one. This is, you know what really grinds my gears? Please don't, I, I don't mean, I didn't, <laughs> that's Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> it's not mine. That's, that's funny. It's an episode of South Park where Peter gets a, um, a segment on the news every night called What Grinds My Gears or something like that. Um, athlete salaries. <laughs> Screw you athletes. Yeah, I'm calling you out. I know you could all kick my ass repeatedly for the next, like, 30 years, but, um, really, I mean, this goes for CEO salaries, too. This isn't, I'm not picking on athletes at all, because I know it takes a certain talent to perform in such a way. However, it's still a goddamn game. It's a sport. Like, like, yes, America loves watching football. America loves watching baseball. I do. I love watching football and baseball. But if I had the choice of watching that... Or seeing the salaries of those players get divided amongst the teachers in this country. <clears throat> I'd go that route. Now, here we go. Oh, poor teachers. Yeah, they get the whole summer off. Da -da -da -de -da 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 -do. I know teachers well. Not that I am one. Oh, I am one, actually. I teach 
Grayson. But I see teachers on a, on almost a daily basis coming in, and they spend all their money for their own supplies for their classroom. And sometimes, if they're lucky, the school will give them a credit of like at most I've ever seen is maybe like two or three hundred dollars for the whole year. All their curriculum, all their bulletin boards, all the paper for the bulletin boards, and chalk and supplies and erasers and like. It's so easy to look at a teacher's salary and go, they have the summer off and they still get paid. Well, that depends on if you're on a nine month or a 12 month contract and so on and so forth. Like, it's, it's easy to, to think that like they have a pretty easy job, but they really don't. And I've learned that from teaching and I've learned that from talking to teachers for the last almost 10 years. Oh, like I said, on a daily basis. And, uh, some of them, you know, some of them are well off, and I'm sure it's because of a family situation or something. But the most of them that come in are not far from where I am, and I'm <laughs> I'm not on the best, you know, financial ground right now. <laughs> but whatever, I'm not talking about that. No. Um, I'm never going to talk about that on here. That's just awkward and weird and <laughs> a little too personal. Even if I, well, whatever. <laughs> I may end up going back and cutting that out. I'll have to watch that later. <laughs> it felt awkward. I'm not going to lie to you. Walking Dead, moving, credit. Uh, athlete salaries. Okay. So, nonetheless, mind you, why is there not a middle ground that everyone kind of meets on? Like, like doctors. We need doctors. If we didn't have doctors, we'd be screwed. It'd be like the dark ages. Like, what will we do to stay healthy? Um, and how would we, you know, mend bones? You know, I'm sure some people would step up, but but they also have to pay a lot of um, <clears throat> malpractice insurance. Like I know a few doctors too from working where I work and working with the people I work with, and yeah, they make. I think this individual made like 250 thousand a year, which is a shitload of money in my opinion. That's crazy. If I had that kind of money, I could retire and like five years I'd find a way <laughs> um, but they also had to pay like nearly like 40% of it back into insurance like all kinds of different insurance but the malpractice was the big one so that's 40% so that's almost half so it's 125,000 so four times that oops, that's 10,000 uh, that'd be like four uh, well 40% obviously but uh, uh, you know, around 115, 120,000, something like that. My brain is just not working right now. That's a lot of money to have to pay on insurance. And as we all know, insurance is just one giant scam. Whoever runs insurance runs this country. I bet. You know why? Because they're making a stupid amount of money off of car insurance and house insurance. The way the companies for insurance should work would be like everybody contributes. Ooh, it's a socialist idea. <laughs> Everybody contributes to this insurance pool. How many people per year, like, for example, let's say we have fire or flood insurance. A, such a small percentage of those are going to have to require a payout. Like, it makes more sense if we independently ran our own insurance companies for health insurance and life insurance and, and so on and so forth. Like, we need to get out of the insurance business and put it back in the hands of the people I think. That's huge. That is absolutely enormous. I don't know how I got to insurance fraud, but I do believe that. Like, I believe that people make so much money. If you get to the end of the year and you've never used your insurance, you should get at least half of it back. Like, I understand paying a company that is going to take care of someone else. I'm fine with giving someone my money to this insurance pool where, like, if you need a new set of dentures and you can't afford it, I don't mind if a percentage of the money I put in goes to that. Like, that's cool. We're all taking care of each other that way. Stop paying these criminal people, like, these insurance companies. How did this happen? Like, how do we get to the point where, like, we're okay with this? <laughs> I mean, how did we? How did we get to the point where we're okay with, like, like, I, I mean, I have a really good insurance company, if you can call any insurance company that. I only pay $90 a month. That's for me and Carol's car. 
uh, cars. Now, obviously, when Gwen gets on our insurance, it's going to be a nightmare. But right now, that's all we pay. I mean, that's full coverage through this company, too. Obviously, there's higher deductibles, but sometimes to play in the lottery, you hope that you win. Sometimes you play that lottery and you hope that you lose. And in this case, I'm, I'm betting on winning. <laughs> Except for winning. I can't remember. Nonetheless, uh, so that's my point. Like, it's a reverse lottery. It's like lottery is another way of doing it. Yeah, everybody might only buy $10 in tickets once every four months, but that adds up to the stupid amounts of money. Look at it compile. And then they take half of it anyway. <laughs> you just can't win. I don't know. I just don't think there should be classes. I believe there is a, a class warfare going on and the rich are just destroying the poor. Like, I think that... I don't know what I think. I think there should be salary caps for CEOs. Certainly, athletes. I read somewhere once, uh, I think it was, well, who was it? Kyle Refkin said it? And I, I'm, don't quote me on this, because it may not have been him, but it was a, you know, Mickey Mail or, or a big name that said, the only difference between an average baseball player and a great one is they can hit the ball an extra 30 feet, basically. Um, and obviously, you, you're required to have some skill to be an average player, too, because I'm certainly, I wouldn't be able to play that. However, it's like, shouldn't everyone get paid that much to do what they want to do? Like, I know not everyone is as good at playing sports, but I think you find your place. You find your walks in life, and you find where you fit in, I guess, and where you don't fit in. And uh, I, don't, I don't know what my point is. I just think it's sad that, you know, CEO pay versus, you know, employee pay has kind of done this for a long time, like 50 years now. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and, and once again, don't quote me, but you can look this up, it's easy to find. If employee pay stayed on par with CEO pay over the last 50 years, minimum wage would be something like uh, somewhere between 22 and 27 dollars an hour and that makes sense to me especially if you're you know in, in a single or married situation because in a single situation well let's do the math on that i'm not going to do it in my head because <laughs> a lot of numbers so let's say 27 let's say 27 dollars an hour times 40 before taxes, you know, you're making about 1080 a week times four, and it's obviously 4320 a week. I mean, a month times 12. You're making 51 thousand dollars a year. Now, that's still not living rich by any means, but I don't make 51 thousand dollars a year. If I made 51 thousand dollars a year, I would feel like I would be literally living on Easy Street. Like I would feel that rich. And to me, that's kind of sad. Like, I'm not sad about it. I'm happy with where I am and who I am. And I'm gonna, you know, like, if I ch choose at the time to, uh, you know, rise up, whatever, I know there's outlets there. And, and I can't say that. I just think, <laughs> let's get back to my original point. I don't know where that was going. I really don't. I just really think that that's what a single individual should make in today's day and age. At least, at least. Honestly, if it was up to me, I'd say even 60,000. Like, and who, that would not be a drop in the bucket of like, if everyone who made over that amount contributed back the amount to make up the difference so that people could live that way, sure, they wouldn't be making a billion a year. They'd only be making like 500 million a year. But God forbid, like, some people have enough money, like, to support. And what is money? Like, why do we crave it and need it and desire it and want it? I don't know. Like, what led us to that point? If, if as evolutionary beings, like, I don't know. I guess it's a whole Darwin thing, but, you know, it's, it's about the fittest and just... 
but I don't know. I just don't want to deal with that. I just want everybody to be happy and get along and sing songs together and dance with flowers. And I mean, I, I know that sounds really hippie, but like, I'm not too far off. I'd love that if everybody just got along. You could break into song any given day on the street. It's fun to sing. You know, it's fun to sing alone in your car or in the shower or if you're in a band or whatever. It's fun to sing. Music's awesome. It's, it's moving. It's it's uplifting. It's comforting. It's like it's all things when it needs to be. You just gotta pick the right song. Ooh, that's deep. <laughs> 1548. Well, I guess we'll call this one. I want to talk about something else that I just, uh, speaking of education and educators, this is almost the opposite side of the coin. So if you want to see the opposite side of the coin, follow me. Follow me to the next video or something. Um, if you don't, check in another time and uh i'm fading fast here i'm not gonna lie to you it's getting late and uh the old road to the cost gotta move on <laughs> right go make somebody smile and uh let's make this world a happier place together Ooh, i like that i've pulled out a few quotes that i've liked of my own <laughs>